disgusting. <laughs> I don't know if I can change. If Danny doesn't get well, she will die. It will just be devastating. There are millions and millions of people with a vast array of different eating issues. I would eat this whole thing. I've popped about 70 to 80 diuretics, and it's Wednesday. I binge and throw up 20 times a day, every day. This is a problem that is going on right next door but you just don't know about it. Now is the time to treat this. If you don't do it now, you're gonna die. This is just kind of purging feelings onto paper. I honestly go through like 100 to 200 packets of sweetener a day. What are you doing? I feel helpless, trapped. You don't talk to me that way. <laughs> I feel worthless. I feel just like scum. Now I'm like freaking out. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not right. Something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. Good, good. It is, it is possible, possible to get your life, your back. life back. I love, I love life, life and I want to live. live. I'm ready. Yeah. OK. 97.5. It's still not where it needs to be. I'm Do trying. You know. I know. My name is Adrian. I'm 21 years old, and I dance in a Vegas style review. Dancing is everything to me. It's my life. When Adrienne comes out on stage, audience members will point at her and stare. They're not watching her because of the quality that she's giving them. They're watching her because she's so thin. I don't think I'm too thin. Not at all. I am five feet and six inches tall, and I weigh 97 pounds. Getting ready is kind of a long process for me because I think that I look fat in almost everything. Um, when I look in the mirror, I just feel really fat and gross. My legs have, like, so much fat. And I have a lot of fat right here. I have a muffin top right here. I would just put something on over it and cover myself up. I wish that people wouldn't comment about my weight anymore or my body and just leave me alone. I'm really scared of gaining weight. So I don't count calories, but I do count fat grams. And every day I have two, and that would be from oatmeal. And if I don't eat oatmeal, then I would have zero. I'm done. I'm scared that eating fat will make me fat. I go to the gym three or four times a week, usually between an hour or two. I do cardio, and I'll do abs, and I stretch. In the evening, I go to work. I dance four hours a night, six days a week. It is pretty strenuous, dancing as much as she does. You do OK. She's a great member of our team, a great member of our family, and we want nothing more than her to be healthy. But the reality of this is she has to get better or we have to replace her. You know, you and I talked about this a long time ago, you know? I said, I need to see weekly progress from you. But we haven't seen it. It hasn't happened. So we have to pull you from the stage if you don't make the progress, OK? <laughs> Love to see her put on two pounds, five pounds, 10 pounds, eventually get her up about 15 pounds to the way she was when we first hired her. I'm terrified of losing my job. I love my job and it's everything to me, but I don't think that I'm skinny. Adrian's been in denial for quite some time. I was in denial for many years, too. Just like Adrian, I grew up in the dance world. 
and I was about the same age as Adrian when I became anorexic. I weighed 86 pounds, 5'7", so it got pretty bad. And what made me recover was taking over a dance studio. I started dancing when I was three, and my mom was my dance teacher. Adrian was always, you know, tiny little thing, and I was the chunky one. She liked, she liked being smaller. Do you want to play with those things? Those dolls, those bobbies and things? If you want to. I think I've always had a bad body image. I remember being like seven or eight and in a dance costume with two pieces and looking in the mirror and thinking like, ew, I, I look fat. I don't know where her fear of fat came from. I never restricted food. I never said, oh, those are bad. But when you dance, you are body conscious. It's part of the process of dancing. As soon as I turned 18, I got my first professional dance job and moved out to Arizona. She was just so striking on stage, and her, her choreography was so tight. She was just, a, she's a great dancer. She called me after the first rehearsal, and she said, Mom, I'm the biggest dancer. And that was a new experience for Adrian. She was never the biggest dancer. As soon as Adrian joined the show, her weight um, started to drop. One, two, three, four. Over the year and a half, she's progressively gotten smaller. One, two. And she has become more of a liability. Bounce four. We're hoping that the ultimatum will be an incentive for her to get better. I go to work and I do my best. I'm doing everything I can and I don't understand why it's not enough. Hi there for me. Adrian presents a very startling appearance. She's markedly underweight. Her muscle structure is very poor. And when I examined her abdomen, it's almost like a scooped out type of look, and there's clearly loss of muscle structure to her whole abdominal wall. My boss doesn't like how I look and told that I'm just getting too skinny and not eating a lot. Okay. Kind of forced to get treatment. Do you think there's a problem at all? Do you think you have an eating disorder? Um, no. All right. Any, uh, any issues with your with your menstrual uh, periods? Yeah, I don't have those. You don't have any feelings of forgetfulness? Yeah, kind of just like loss of train of thought a lot and like forgetting what I went into a room to do and... There's a lot of fat. Uh, you know, goes into your brain. Your brain is made up of so much fat, and if you're not taking in that, you know, those kind of fats, your brain doesn't function as well. From this point, we'll order some blood tests on you, and then we'll also do an EKG on you, and also a bone density scan, see if we can uncover, you know, the beginnings of uh, any abnormalities in you. How's breakfast? Um, I really don't think I can eat when you're watching me anymore. I think I just can't do it. My name is Danny. I'm 21 years old. I live in New Jersey with my parents. On a normal day, I binge and purge about five or six times. I go and just eat whatever I can find. Some of my favorites are in here. I think the pizza, a lot of pasta, the cheese. I love to eat burgers, love the cereal. I can eat a whole box at a time. I don't like eating in front of other people. I feel like they're judging me, so I usually try to eat in my room by myself. When I finally realize, what I'm doing, and I'm so stuffed to the point of where I feel like my stomach's going to explode, the panic sets in. Then I have to get to a bathroom as fast as I possibly can and purge, and purge so hard. Thank you. 
Sometimes I'll black out. Sometimes I'll throw up blood. And it's, you know, it kills me every time. I usually measure myself right around the middle. Used to be 25, now it's about 26. So that kind of sucks for me. The only time I ever feel thin is when I've either purged or right after I work out. I will work out four hours on end. At the gym, at home, running, swimming in the pool, I will collectively exercise probably about six hours a day. I'm consistently exhausted from the over-exercising or the lack of nutrition or vomiting. I never feel good. When I look in the mirror, I feel like there's this ugly, fat, worthless person looking back at me. And I don't see somebody who deserves to be alive. Sometimes I feel like I've been through so much that I'm like 45, maybe 50. Like I'm at the end of my life rather than the very beginning. I've been through a lot. Danielle was the kind of baby every parent dreamed of. Isn't he cute? Very happy, easygoing, and academically nothing was a challenge for her. She was always so smart. When my brother and I were kids, we were really close. Up until I was about eight years old, my brother was healthy. And then he started getting these really, really terrible headaches. They literally put him out. I was born with a cystic hygroma on my neck, and my headaches started after I had uh, my third operation. Doing a good job, Chal. It really crippled him, and everything changed. Danielle did not take Charlie's illness very well. I was so focused on getting Charlie better that I didn't see that she may have been in more pain than I thought she was in. I think I felt a little neglected. The way I would comfort myself was food. Hi, Dan. I gained about 40 pounds and was really, really chunky for all of fifth grade. I got teased relentlessly. I didn't make any friends. I was the fat kid. They told me I was the fat kid to my face. It was the worst experience of my life. That year, I think, like, I just broke. The next year, she sprouted up three, four inches, thinned out. She seemed more accepted then and was happy. I definitely got the idea that being skinny was much better than being overweight. I refused to ever be the fat kid again. When Danny got to high school, it was as though she clicked again, and uh, cheerleading seemed to be her thing. It, it almost defined her. Cheerleading for me was like a dream come true. The cheerleaders were seen as, you know, popular and pretty and fun, and I just finally felt like I was somebody. When senior year came for Danielle, if anyone had to bet on it, they would have bet Danielle would have been offered a place as one of the captains on the team. I had been dying to be captain of the varsity cheerleading squad forever. This was supposed to be the pinnacle of her high school career, and it went down in flames. The day I found out I didn't get cheerleading captain, I was completely devastated. Everything that I had worked for the past three years seemed like it was all for nothing. I felt robbed of something I thought I really deserved. She wouldn't accept it. That was the, the beginning of the end for her. Something kind of snapped inside of me. I went to eat dinner, and I remember for the first time I just felt full, and I didn't like it. And I went into the bathroom and made myself throw up. You could see her getting physically thinner. You could just see her whole body, you know, the mind and soul just uh, deteriorating. I lost probably about 30, 35 pounds, and I couldn't even go to school anymore. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't stay awake. I was passing out. I had to be homeschooled for the rest of the school year. I just couldn't believe it. she was purging in the bathroom. My eating disorder took over my life, and it all went downhill really, really quick. I was so concerned she was going to die. And I said, you need to make a decision to get help and go into an inpatient facility. And she agreed. Basically, for 45 days, it was like $135,000, $140,000. We didn't have the money. We took an equity loan. When Danny came home from rehab, we were extremely optimistic. Say hi, Dad. Good morning, sweetie. Good morning. And we thought she was on the road to recovery. This past year since Danielle came home, has been challenging. She is binging and purging six times a day. 
and that's something I'll never forgive myself for, was wasting my parents' money, wasting their hope. I threw it in their face. She's been hospitalized, I'd say a dozen times. Heart palpitations, heart skipping beats, dehydration. My, my biggest fear is she's gonna do it so much that her you know, body's just gonna get all out of flutter and her heart's gonna you know, give up and she's gonna die. Today we're here at Dr. Red Cross's office. Please have a seat. To get the results of all Danielle's physicals. To me, this is another step in the process of getting her into recovery, and that's exciting. Your heart rate is a little bit slower than I would have liked. When you're vomiting, you lose electrolytes. And when you lose those, you can send your heart into a tailspin. Really? Yeah, and there is a relationship with sudden death. Now over to your bone density, it looks as if you have a small compression fracture at the L4 spine. Is that down here? It is, Fun it's your ass lower back. always hurts. Well, I bet you that's exactly why. My biggest concern is that this is the first sign of bone deterioration. This can be due to the calcium you're losing when you purge. Even though you're now in your 20s, I'm not so certain that we're gonna be so lucky in your 30s because there's been damage done. Is everything you're talking about here repairable? Absolutely, okay. absolutely reversible but you have to want to reverse it. Today, I'm getting my results of my medical exam. I'm not really nervous. I feel really healthy, so I don't think that um, anything's gonna be too shocking or surprising for me, so I'm ready. The potassium came back a little bit on the low side. Low levels of potassium can lead to your heart stopping. And the EKG is abnormal. Once again, that is indicative of the low potassium, and that's a problem. That potassium level could drop to just a low enough amount, and next thing you know, you're dancing and your heart stops. I maybe should be worried, I don't know, but in my honest opinion right now, I'm not worried. I still see fat, and I see things that I need to improve and make better. Today is my first day with a new therapist, and I'm a little nervous because I haven't had great experiences before, and it's never worked for me, but um, I'm learning to deal with it, and I'm trying to get there. Hi, I'm Danielle. Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Thank you. My name is Dr. Camilla Mager. I am a licensed clinical psychologist, and my specialty is eating disorders. So why don't you tell me a little bit about why you're coming to therapy? I've had an eating disorder since I was about 17. I didn't think it was a problem like a year and a half ago, and now I know it's a definite problem. What changed? I don't want to die. I don't want to be miserable anymore. I want to enjoy my life. I don't want to push away my friends and my family. Sounds like you're getting sick and tired of being sick and tired. I really am. I wanted to ask about short-term goals or things that you're hoping to get out of the treatment. I've forgotten how to feel hungry and full. You know, like finding that good, like 50%, like it's either zero or 100. Listening to your interoceptive cues, listening to what's yeah. going on internally is, is gonna be very important. Yeah, that's a goal. Are there any other kind of short-term goals that we're looking at in the next six weeks that really are sort of manageable. I'm dependent. Okay. I definitely have like dependent issues. I don't know where I would be without my mom's help. Like I would probably be in a gutter somewhere if like I didn't have my mom. But it's not healthy. Like she's my mom. She's not my therapist. And I think she needs to see a therapist for all that. Many people with bulimia have a hard time setting boundaries. A lot like Danny with her mother. So to help with that, I'm going to suggest that Danny bring her mother into a session and practice setting some boundaries in a safe environment. Sounds like you're willing to take the risk, put in some of the work, and you know, give it a shot, yeah. which is good. I'm really glad to hear that. Me too. Today, I'm going to Dr. Donne for my first therapy session. I'm kind of nervous to go through treatment for an eating disorder because it's really hard for me to accept that I have a problem. 
Hi, Adrian. Hi. I'm Dr. Juliane. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist specializing in the treatment of eating disorders. Oh, I'm a dancer, mm -hmm. and I was told I have had to gain weight. And how do you feel about that? I can't accept right now gaining weight. I can't. Why? Tell me what I that. What because does... I don't think I'm skinny. Hmm. You wanted to do it for them? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. My family's really worried about me, but I live here alone. And my mom was anorexic when she was my age. Okay. But I haven't actually talked to my mom a whole lot about specific habits and like things. Is that something that you would be open to kind of talking to her about? Um. I mean, she's got a wealth of, it sounds like, experience and knowledge that I think could be really helpful for you. Yeah. Okay, good. So what do you know about anorexia? Um, I know that, that it's, it's just having a distorted body image and that it's not, you don't see what other people see. Okay, bingo. But I don't, but I don't see it. You know, okay, like... Okay, we're going to be working together intensely over the next six weeks. At the end of that six weeks, we're going to revise our treatment plan and we're going to work on an aftercare program for long-term treatment. And we're going to work along with the medical doctor, we're going to work along with the dietitian. Okay, so let's talk about what some of your goals for the next six weeks are. Right now, the only thing I can say is that I want to keep my job. Adrian has all the classic symptoms of anorexia nervosa, but Adrian's goal is to keep her job. If somebody is not in my office based on their own desires, their own goals, their treatment's not going to be successful. seeing Brenda tomorrow and she's a nutritionist and then I'm going to try to work out because I didn't work out yesterday and I didn't I just felt gross at night and I was too tired to work out but I'm going to tonight I'm just gonna measure the midpoint between your shoulder and your elbow I'm Brenda Jurgensen. I'm a registered dietitian at an outpatient treatment center for eating disorders. The theory is if the muscle's okay in your arm, then I know your organ tissue's okay. In uh, my first meeting with Adrian, I did her body comps and measured her body fat, and what I found was pretty scary. Normal body fat for someone your age is 18 to 25 percent. Guess where you're at? I don't know. Eight. Well, and even being a dancer, do you think your muscle's pretty normal? Yeah. You're below the 10th percentile, which means that 90% of women have more muscle than you. Oh, I thought I have pretty good muscles. Muscle mass is a living, breathing tissue. If you don't give it any fuel, it goes away. Oh. You do need to restore some weight. Can I give you a meal plan to give a shot? Mm -hmm. Brianna told me that she was going to make a meal plan for me, but I'm fine and I eat enough. I'll try. Okay. I gave Adrian a meal plan and it has some fats in it and I'm not sure if she's going to be able to do that on her own. So my plan is to go to her house and have something with some fats in it with her so that we can do some exposure therapy around that. You don't get fat from eating fat. Mm. Tonight we're just thrilling. We normally do this in the summer almost every single night. Danny has a tendency to come eat with us, but you know it's only for maybe about five, six minutes and then walk off, so we'll see. My family dynamic is just like so intense half the time. Like the last thing I wanted to do was sit down and eat dinner with my family. We have too much food on this table. My mom's like super fake happy. My brother's like super cranky half the time, and then my dad. How's work? Oh no. How are we doing, Dano? Yay! 
I just, I don't know what it is. Like, I, it's probably just me. I just can't sit there and, like, talk. <coughs> Daddy, please don't cry. <coughs> yeah, right there? Time for the language. <laughs> 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 ah! <laughs> There's only so much of that I can tolerate. I don't know, like I tried to just go to sleep and I just like was so upset that I just burst anyway. Your family's still putting on a very good face. Everyone's fake, like my mom acts fake for the camera, you know, like everyone plays it up like, oh, happy family. And it's like, we're not always a happy family. Mm. Nobody's always a happy family. It happens, like no one's always happy. We had talked a while back about maybe bringing your mom in. I'm wondering kind of how you're feeling about that. I don't know. Like, if you want to, fine. Stop, stop with what well, I want to. Well, you keep bringing it up like you want them in here so we could talk about well, it. Well, I'm asking because I'm not, I, I. I don't want anybody else in my therapy sessions. Okay. And for you, the reason you don't want that is. I don't want to have to make them deal with this more than they already are. That's why I don't want to bring them into therapy. I don't want to have to talk about it with them anymore. Everyone has their own sh going on and their own problems and their own stuff they bring into the family. And Mim's crazy and my mom fakes it. And my dad's never home and my brother's a mess. Like, it's a whole bunch of stuff that I can't even begin to explain half of it. You know, I've noticed that when I push on something that's uncomfortable for you, your first response is anger. Your eating disorder is about food, but we both know that's just the symptom, not the problem. The problem is what you do with all these feelings. I am really interested in all the stuff you hide and in all the pain you feel. You want to know and I don't know how to tell you. I wouldn't expect you to. The bulimia has been your language for such a long time. And now we're trying to give you a new language, but you're learning it, you know? I don't, I don't want to talk about it. How come? because I don't want to. When I'm being told to talk about feelings, I don't have feelings. The first feeling I've been able to show is anger and sadness and disappointment in myself. And it's so frustrating. The only thing I ever feel is ashamed that I can't control my eating disorder. Tonight after the show, there was an irate customer approached me in regards to Adrienne saying that someone with anorexia shouldn't be on stage. She was really appalled. And we haven't seen any progression with her weight. Hi. Hi. And I hope that she understands from a business standpoint what position that puts us in. So we had an irate customer tonight. Oh, about me? Mm hmm But she yelled at me and said that I should be fired. Allowing an anorexic girl to be on stage? She just said that it's appalling to look at. And I'm feeling really fat today. That's why I was going to the gym. Adrian. <laughs> I do need to let her know that she needs to step off the stage. Um, you don't have to come to work anymore. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry if I haven't made enough progress. I'm sorry if I, but I am trying my hardest and I can't go through all of this at once. I want to help. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do either. There's so much in front of you. There is. It gets really hard to believe that.
Annie was actually sick for most of the week, so we only had one therapy session together. So what's going on? I purged twice this weekend. Okay, so what were you feeling? I just like, I'm like depressed. Like it's the last week of summer and I can't even say that I did anything like really enjoyable or for me this whole summer. You don't think that getting into treatment was for you? I wouldn't say treatment's a fun thing. Like I hate it. But you are gonna stay in therapy. I don't know what I'm gonna do. How was therapy today? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm still not really happy with it. It's gonna take a while, I think, before I'm okay with it. I know, I know. As long as you're comfortable with it. I mean, I'm not really comfortable with it, though. That's the thing, is I don't know what to do with it. Danielle's pattern in therapy would be going to the therapist, putting on a good face, and then she would get bored of each therapist, or she felt they weren't helping, so she would say, this is not it, and I'm out of here. It has been hard work just to get through every single day. And if Danny doesn't get well, she will die. It will just be devastating. I don't know if I could ever recover from that. I feel a mess. I'm so depressed about getting fired. So I've asked my sister and my mom to come from St. Louis. It means the world to me to know that they're coming out to do therapy with me. She doesn't have a job. She has no way to pay her bills. And it's a lot of stress. I fear that she'll lose her motivation to get better. Hey! <laughs> I was so shocked when I saw her. It was, it was scary. I can't believe I haven't seen you for seven months. I just know I'm so happy. It was very hard for me not to break down and cry. Skinny little thing. But I knew that was what she did not need. So I made you guys cookies? Are you going to eat some? No. Doesn't look like you drink or eat anything. I do. She's definitely not the Adrian that we're used to being around. She just looks so sick. Look at her little bitty carton of eggs. I should probably use those for uh, making cookies. I'm sure she didn't eat any eggs. No, she's always hated eggs. The cookies look good. I wonder if she's ever tried one. I taught her how to uh, make cookies. I wish I could teach her how to eat cookies. It is so nice to have you here. We were, we were thrilled to get to come. Family therapy is a very important part of individuals' treatment, especially when they are Adrian's age. This is not about blame. This is about understanding what happened that contributed to Adrian's eating disorder. How was weight handled around the house? I don't know if you're aware of it, but when I was about Adrian's age, I was anorexic. But I also never restricted food. If they want to eat four cupcakes, mm -hmm. they can have the four cupcakes. And I don't think, I, did I ever say anything? No, no I never did. Uh, but I'm hard on myself. But I really, I was so hard not wanting to pass that on to them. But, okay. yeah, but I have, hard on yeah. Okay, hard on yourself? You saw mom being hard on herself? In what yeah. ways, Alex? Um, well, she always compliment us and then say, you know, I have the most beautiful children, but I don't know how. I wasn't as pretty as my daughters. You know, and I, I'm thrilled they're beautiful, but I wasn't. But maybe that's how you feel on the inside. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's great that you did not pass on that criticism to them directly, okay? You were very loving and aware of that. But I think that as long as you continue to be critical within yourself, that gets modeled. Parents need to recognize that the best way to help their children is to be healthy within themselves. I was able to point out to Dee that inadvertently she did hand down this self-criticalness because she was still engaging in that within herself. I 
I think today opened my family's eyes to what I'm going through, and I think that they want to help me and will help me. So just vegetables and applesauce? The applesauce on the side? Yeah. Okay. It goes to a restaurant and orders applesauce. <laughs> What you think of today? I'm glad that we talked about it. I am too. As hard as it sounds, like I need you to quit enabling me. If you see a problem, I need you to tell me what you see. I see a very, very skinny girl. Your back is just like you can count every vertebrae. I can see your your hip bones. I mean, this. this you can see that on anyone if they no, bend you can't. over. No, you can't. You can't. I can't be seeing what other people are seeing because then you would understand. Maybe I really need help seeing it, but I'm working on it. But you do acknowledge that you don't eat enough? Because honestly, I think you should be able to eat at least two more pieces of broccoli. So you think that's enough to eat? You want my honest opinion? Yes, I think it's enough to eat if you are um, a gerbil or a, a small hamster <laughs> or a small hamster. <laughs> I feel my daughter's recovery is is going to be harder than I first thought. I'm really trying to be strong for her. Today I am on my way over to Adrian's house. I'm bringing lunch for her. I am anticipating that this will be a very difficult session for her based on the fact that she's already got a ton of anxiety and I'm asking her to not use her eating disorder to deal with that anxiety. I got the kind of sandwich that you wanted, but I really do want you to try and see if you can do some of the cheese. I know you're really scared of fats, but you don't get fat from eating fat. Right. Can you say that back to your eating disorder? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get fat from eating fat. Okay. I got us some chips too. Okay. What are you feeling right now? Like, I don't want to eat that cheese and I don't want to eat those chips. Yep. Okay. So, what do you need to do? Just do it anyways. Mm -hmm. Have you tasted any of the cheese? Yes. What does it make you think of? Like unnecessary fat mm -hmm. that I don't want. That's okay. <laughs> Are you ready to try a chip? Mm -hmm. I'll eat the chip. Is there any part that likes it? No, I don't think so. There's a part that knows you're right, that it won't hurt me. Do you think you could do another one? Mm -mm. If I do another one, can that be all? Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't want to eat that. I'm kind of mad that I ate it. I just feel really full and gross. So how are your symptoms? What's uncomfortable with the questions I'm asking? I don't know. You look annoyed. No, I'm not. I'm just tired and like, I don't want to do this. Today is Danny's final session of her six week intensive. She can choose to continue with treatment or she can quit. How motivated are you really to begin to let go of your eating disorder? I just don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm rather concerned that if she chooses to quit, she'll feel like she failed her family again, and as a result, will return to binging and purging to cope with the feelings of shame. I really don't know which way she's gonna go. So Adrian, right now, today, as you look in the mirror, what's your perception of your body? I think I look fat. There is an experiential exercise and it's called body tracing. I just wanna show you a different perspective of 
this body that you experience is fat? Are you open to that? Mm-hmm. I want you to trace an outline of how you see your body. First, I drew my body outline like I felt it and how I see it. I'm gonna ask, does this feel comfortable? Okay, if it does not, because I'm gonna be touching your body with the marker, I want you to tell me. It doesn't bother me. Okay. And then Dr. Renee had me lay down and actually outlined my body and how it really looks. You experience your body like this, correct? Yes. Okay. Your eating disorder has you see the pink, but the orange is the reality. Pretty shocking, huh? Yeah. Adrian, this is what the rest of the world sees. This is what your mom sees. This is what your sister sees. This is what I see. It's scary because I don't see that. I know. At all. But Adrian, that's the reality. You just felt me go up against your body. This is your body. I just wish that I saw that. You have anorexia. We want to help you beat this disorder. We're going to have a much better chance if you want to beat the disorder too. Okay. It's completely two different views of my body. It helped me to see what other people do see. I obviously have a problem, and I'd have a long process in front of me in recovery. I don't like therapy. I don't know who does. I mean, maybe a lot of other people feel like they need to go sit and cry to someone for an hour, but I don't. And I don't care if Camilla thinks I'm not going to therapy because I'm hiding from my eating disorder. I'm, I'm done. I'm sick of it. I'm really completely over it. hard the past six weeks but I'm on my way to my new job as a dance teacher I'm really excited to get into teaching so I'm starting parallel I think it'll be really good for me in recovery let's do it with the music I need to continue making progress I want to fully recover and there's just so much more that I want to do